And hello YouTube, this is GS Man Smart, and I'm going to tell you with a brand new video for tutorials with GS. Today's tutorial, we're going to be looking at GIMP, the free image editing software, and we're going to be showing you how to create bottle cap images on top of bottle cap templates for you to go ahead and print out and then use those bottle cap images and place them on your bottle caps if that's what you're willing to do. I, get a, I got a message a few days ago from someone on my Facebook fan page and they were asking me to make a tutorial for this because they were having trouble with it and they couldn't find any good tutorials that explained it. So I'm sort of filling the request in. If you have any other requests or want to know how to do something, you can either leave a comment, message me on a fan page or on YouTube and I'll definitely be willing to see what I can do for you. So hopefully the person who messaged me will find this helpful. Hopefully those of you watching will find it interesting, maybe you'll learn something. So the first step that you want to basically complete to actually start making your bottle cap images, you need to find a template, a bottle cap template. You can either create your own bottle cap template, and if you'd like me to make a tutorial on that, leave a comment below, and I'll make a tutorial on it. If those of you who need it are interested, I'll make one. But for now, I'm going to be using a bottle cap template that I found off of Google Images. You can get the same one off of Google Images. It's right on the first page of the images, probably like the third image there. All you have to type in is a bottle cap template. And you can save the one that I have. There's also several other ones that you can get. But the one that I'm going to be using is right here. We have bottlecaps.png. This is what I'm using, and like I said, this is the one that you can get off of Google Images as well. And the size is a 1024 by 683. I believe that is the uh, default size that these are supposed to be. But anyway, once you have that open, and you open it by file open, once you have that open, the next thing to do is to open up all of your images. The, the, the images that you want to place in these circles for your bottle caps, those are the images you're going to be opening. I'm going to be doing two examples. After those two examples, hopefully you'll understand the technique and hopefully you'll be able to complete the other ones. But we're going to go ahead and go to File, Open as Layers. Make sure you're opening as layers, nothing else. And you're just going to go ahead and open up your images. Here's one of my images, Bottle Cap 1 image, and then Open as Layers again, Bottle Cap 2 image. These are the two images that we're going to be working with. One of them is Arin, a character from Final Fantasy X. The other one is a League of Legends logo. And I've picked these two images purposely because each of these you can work with in a different way. Now, several tutorials that I've seen show you how to use the ellipse tool. You can use the ellipse tool and it's not such a bad idea, but for some reason GIMP kind of messes up the selection sometimes when you're working the, with the ellipse tool. And it can be a bit more complicated to work with the ellipse tool. However, if you've learned how to do this method with the ellipse tool then all power to you but I'm gonna be showing a different method maybe you'll find it easier so what the first step you want to do is after you've opened up your image make sure that you have your image selected on the right side you'll have your layers whatever image whatever layer you're working on make sure you have it selected because if you have another layer selected all changes you're making are gonna to be towards that layer so we're gonna be working with our cap one image first with this layer and the first step is to scale it down. Go ahead and get your scale tool on the left side here. You can press Shift T to activate it as well. And then go ahead and click the layer, hold down Control, and grab one of these corners and just scale it down. Now the larger your image is, the better. The higher resolution, the better. Reason being is because we're gonna be scaling this down quite a bit. And what's happening when we're scaling it down is that it's gonna lose quality and it's going to get pixelized. So the higher resolution your image is, the less quality will be lost and the less, pix the less pixelized it will look. So bigger images are better. Now once you have it scaled down to, to a relatively small size where you could see that, okay, this could possibly work, in order to check this if it will work, what you can do is hide this image, the little eyeball right here, and go ahead and go to your template layer, grab your fuzzy select tool, and go ahead and click inside the circle here and it will select the inside of the circle. Then go back to the image layer, click the eyeball to show it, and it'll give you a little outline showing you what's actually going to be inside the circle. You can make adjustments with the move tool if you'd like, but I think we're gonna keep it just like that. Once you have it like this, you can go ahead and go up to select, go to invert, then go to edit, and then go to cut. 
and this will basically cut everything out that's not part of the circle. Now, if you notice, we do have some blank spaces at the top and at the bottom, and when you run into situations like these, if you're working with a base color background, it's very easy to fix this. If you're working with other kinds of backgrounds, you may have to get creative and perhaps use the clone stamp tool or perhaps uh, duplicate this layer to sort of fill in the background if it's a pattern or something like that. But if it's a base color like this, it's very easy to fix this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go hide this layer one more time and we're gonna go over here, grab our fuzzy select tool on our template layer, click the inside of the circle one more time then go back to our image here and show it again. And from here, we're gonna go ahead and grab our color picker tool on the left side here. And then we're gonna select the background color here. And we're gonna go back to this layer here. And all you're gonna do now is just color in. And you can color over the logo, it won't matter. Just make sure you're filling in all the blank spots because you're gonna be working, you're working on a layer that's underneath the logo, you're working on the template layer. And because it's underneath the logo, uh, the changes you make on top of the logo won't be seen because it's covering it. So once you have it filled up like so, and you can check to see if you missed any spots. But once you have it filled up like this, you're basically done with one bottle cap. You can go up to select none. So that's one way of, that's one technique. If you have an image like this, like a logo, and you have to fit it down, then you'll have to do those steps. Now with another image, it's gonna be a little, it's gonna be the same techniques, but you don't need to do as much work. So this is a pretty big image, which, which is what we want. We're gonna go back to the same techniques, use our scale tool, click the layer, hold down control, grab an edge, and just scale it down some. Then we're gonna go ahead and drop it over the circle a little bit to sort of get an idea if it's good enough. If we wanna check, we're gonna hide the layer. Another note that I'd like to mention real quick is whenever you're adding images, make sure you're working from bottom to top. If you're adding an image, don't add it underneath this because what'll happen is that the top layer will overlap it. Make sure you're working from bottom to top and keep on adding new images to your template on top of the other ones. So if you have a cap three image, make sure it's on top of cap two. So anyway, if we want to go ahead and check how it will look with, with the uh, selection, we're going to go ahead and grab our fuzzy select tool again, grab the, select the inside of the circle here, go back to our image, show it, and we have a rough idea of what it will look like if we were to cut it out like so, which looks pretty good to me. So make sure you're on your image layer again, go to select, invert, edit, cut, and there we have it. So those are just two examples of how you can create your bottle cap images on a bottle cap template. Like I said, the ellipse tool works too, but I'm, I've become more familiar with this method and found it a lot easier. Hopefully you find it easier too. Now, if you ever want to make copies of this, for example, if you want to make a copy of this one down here, you don't need to redo everything. All you need to do is click the layer here and click duplicate layer, and then you'll have a copy of this layer and all you gotta do is move it down. So it's pretty easy to duplicate layers and copy and paste them. But if you're making uh, new images, then you, you'll have to go through the steps of scaling them down, going to select and uh, invert and edit and cutting. Hopefully you found the uh, video helpful, the person that messaged me on Facebook. Uh, hopefully you're not as lost anymore. And for those of you watching, perhaps you found it interesting. Perhaps you learned something new. If you did, great. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, any problems you're running into, any other requests that you'd like me to do a video on, you can leave it in the comments section below. I'll try my best to answer them. And we have plenty of other software tutorials, GIMP tutorials, design tutorials, tech tutorials, all on the channel. If you haven't checked them out yet, I suggest you do, and perhaps even subscribe. And for now, that'll be it for this video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching, and I hope this video helped you out in any way. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. It'll really help me out. If you didn't like it, you can leave a comment as well, giving some feedback. If you have any other comments or questions, please leave them in the comments as well, and I'll do my best to answer them. I usually respond to comments within 24 to 48 hours, depending on your question and depending on how busy I am. I have plenty of other content on my channel about different software tutorials and how-to videos, so if you're interested in that type of stuff, check it out. And if you like what you're seeing, you can subscribe too. Really appreciate it. You can also check out my other channels and social media as shown on the screen right now. 
And with that, thank you so much, everyone. And this is GS Man Smart, and I'll be back sooner than you think. Don't go anywhere.